100% virgin hair, uh, we would call this maybe a level 5, uh, level 6. Uh, she has really, really tight curls as you can see. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is, is, is taking her back to the bowl, rinsing her, and then going starting with our blow drying procedure. But if you can see, her hair is really, really, it's not extremely coarse, however it is, tight in curls, very tight, uh, very compact. I would say her hair is probably foot and a half to 18, 20 inches long, even though here it may appear to be uh, three or four inches long. The, the process that I'm gonna be doing now is blow drying um, and getting her prepared to thermal relax her. We're gonna part the hair in four sections, uh, the nape in two sections and the crown in front in two sections. Um, I'm now taking subsections within my section. Uh, again, her hair is uh, a lot thicker and she is tender headed, so we have to be conscious of tugging on her hair. If I was to have all the hair down and was to blow dry her hair, then it would be uh, hard on her. And the last thing we're trying to do now is make her feel uncomfortable. We want her to be as comfortable as possible throughout this process. Uh, so I'm gonna be using subsections, uh, parting's about two, two and a half inches, blowing drying that straight, going in, making another subsection into the entirety of the head. All my tension will go on the root area, not so much concerning myself with the ends of the hair. The ends of the hair, you just kind of flip through them. You just kind of flip through them. The tension, again, on the initial root area of the hair, where you get your most tension and then just kind of flip through the ends. Just kind of flip through the ends. We're not, we don't have to concentrate solely on the ends to get them straight because the, the, the uh, feather flat and the multi t will take care of that force. This is completely blow dry from scalp out to the ends as you can see. This is her texture before we start our thermal relaxing process. It's completely blow dry. Uh, again, we started in sections and blow dry from the ends to the scalp, uh, relieving tension on her hair so that we don't break her hair off or cause her any, any type of breakage. But this is the texture. Strictly, this is my technique. I start at the front and work around. Uh, because of her length, uh, I'm going to just be using the uh, feather flat only. Uh, and I use straight partings about three, four inches in width, uh, depending on the size and the width of your feather flat, uh, will determine uh, how wide you will part the hair. And I will show that in use in a second. But general, generally, no more than, than, than three inches would work. And you just part the hair off. Make sure it's parted off, no other hair gets in. And then we're gonna be taking small sections, about a half of an inch to a quarter of an inch uh, in, in width uh, that we're gonna be feather relaxing at, at one point. So your tools for this are gonna be a couple clips, a nice rat tail comb, and of course your thermal styling tools. Uh, the proper way is to go in, close down, slide, put the comb underneath, and as the hair falls, you let the hair fall. Then you can go back and catch the ends. However, most of the time, 90% of the time, you'll only need to stroke the hair one time, meaning you go in, you close, you you, and you allow that to smooth, and then you just come straight down. Okay, no moving, no beveling, just in and straight down. I'm gonna get this hot, and then I'm gonna show you this in action.
have to be, if you can see that, there have to be very small partings. That's key to thermal relaxing. If not, you're gonna leave some hair in between here that's not gonna get relaxed properly. So you wanna make sure that your partings are kept uniform and about the same width each time all the way throughout the head. This technique here is cooling the iron and I just do that as a preference to using a towel or whatever other method that they teach us to check the, the, the heat of the implement. <laughs> Again, with very simple motion, go all, all the way over the top. And this is not burning her. I refuse to burn her. Go in, all the way down, close. Do not pinch, just close and slide. There should be no tension on her hair at all. Just close and slide. Is that comfortable to you? Yes. No, no pulling? No. No heat on your scalp? No. Outstanding. Now this contrast here, this is completed. This is undone. Just wanted to show you the difference. And I'm gonna go back in, start again, and then finally what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna raise her hair up, and then I'm gonna show how to straighten the nape and the edges using uh, the world famous slither. And I'll be doing that last after I complete the whole circumference of the head. One of the good things about this tool is uh, we always talk about uh, how we can keep the client from getting burnt or eliminating some of the the things that go wrong when they're using a the pressing comb. Uh, unlike any other tool, the Feather Flat is designed to go in uh, and get close to the scalp without opening up or hitting the ear or the other part of the scalp in here. So without me having to tell her to hold her ear, I just go in all the way in, if you can see, and I'm closing it and then I come out without even having to ask her to move her ear. And as you can see, the hair straight. What I'm gonna use is the multi T. Multi-tea is designed, I can literally go in, grab one hair at a time and straighten it if need be. Yeah. Okay, we also have what we call the slither, which allows me to get in these areas again that are over the ears the same way, one hair at a time if need be. Literally one hair at a time. Can you see that, Brady? Literally I can grab one hair at a time if I need be. Okay? Unlike a pressing comb, pressing comb has to be in this area, you go about this much you're trying to use, so chances of burning her become far greater than using this. And this is, this is the procedure. You go in, you grab the hair, and you just pull straight back. Straight back. You notice I'm not burning her. You don't feel that? Now I'm gonna do the nape area the same way. Here we have hairs that need to be straightened. So what we do is we just isolate them by pulling them out, making sure that we're gonna get them all here. Hold the hair up, drop the hairs that on the very bottom so we can make sure that it's all straight. Clip it out of the way. and it's one hair at a time. No burning involved, no burning her. No one has to be hurt. But that's the procedure. Once again, this is called multi-T or the slither. The slither is actually designed to do this process. You can use the multi-T. I use it for weight and texture. If her texture was a little finer, then I could use the slither. But for the weight to get the hair straighter and hold the heat longer, I can do more than I use the multi-T. But if you can see, there's a similar like and shape. The width is the difference. This is designed to straighten. This can also straighten as well as be used as a styling tool.
for short hair, for short styles to do spikes, etc. This procedure I'm getting ready to do now is just going to be uh, slightly bumping her ends just to give her some direction. Not completely, but just to give it a bend and give it some direction and as well finish some of these ends here. Um, you don't need a uh, section and it's not real important here, but depending on what size iron you're using, because I'm using a really large iron, then the sections can be a lot larger. Remember earlier when I was talking about working the, the, the hair shaft about halfway out with the heat good and then kind of lightening up on the ends because you're going to go back and finish with your, with your curling iron. So you don't want to go too much heat. Remember, you blow dry is heat, your thermal relaxing is heat, and then your curling iron is heat. Here, you're only going to be smoothing this process, and the heat will actually concentrate on the ends to give it the bend, meaning that the ends are going to get more heat, meaning the ends don't need to get any more heat. So therefore, we're only going to be concentrating on getting the ends smooth and not so much as worrying about here. just to give it a little bend. That's it. Same thing, partings aren't important here because we're just bumping her ends. So we can go wide. The main thing we want to do is concentrate on making sure that the ends get bent and curled. So we don't need to worry about heat, a lot of heat in this area as we would in this area. Again, that's the reason why we don't concentrate on putting so much heat with the thermal relaxer from the half the hair shaft out. We want to save some of that so that when we go back with the curling iron, then it's going to finish and complete the smoothing process. As you see, there's no creases. One of the reasons meaning we have what we call our dual iron technique, where the lip has been reduced in size. So when it closes, it only closes in a partial C and not a complete C. So when I close, I don't clamp. I'm almost in a flat iron status and the iron just slides. Using no more than four tools, uh, starting with the feather flat uh, and ending with the multi T and the slither. This is our final effect. Uh, when you see the before and the after, you'll see exactly why we call this thermal relaxing.